What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna learn about the private keyword in Apex. We'll figure out what it is, when to use it, and most importantly, we'll do a couple examples in Apex together. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. In this episode, we are gonna find out about the private access modifier or the private keyword in Apex. But before we get into the private access modifier, make sure if you actually enjoy this video to like it because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like you that wanna learn this stuff for free. So if you like the video, actually hit the like button and now let's get back to what you came here for. We have, in the past several episodes, gone over the global, the public, and the protected keyword. And this one, the private keyword, or the private access modifier, is the most restrictive access modifier. So, um, you know, global gives you the most access, public is the next level, um, protected is a, 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 a level down, from public and private is the most restrictive that you can be. And I will say that this is an access modifier that you should use all the time. And unfortunately, what I see all too often in Salesforce orgs especially is that this keyword is almost never used or it's not used anywhere near enough. And I think that comes from, <clears throat> I guess, you know, not quite grasping why it's so important to use it. So we're going to go over that, uh, obviously. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the private keyword, when you uh, leverage it, allows you to essentially make a method or a variable <laughs> within a class um, only accessible to that class, right? So what I mean by that is if I declared a variable within this access modifiers class that I've got right in front of me, um, <clears throat> if I declared a variable private, private uh, integer cool integer equals zero or something, I've misspelled integer, and I've still misspelled it integer. <laughs> there we go. Then this integer would only be accessible to this class, and only to this class. No other class that called this or instantiated, uh, or you know, had this class instantiated within it, would be able to access this variable, and. This is important because oftentimes, I would say more often than not, the variables that you declare within a class and often the methods that you declare within a class um, should not be accessed by outside classes. Uh, you really want to only allow outside classes or outside code to access pieces of your classes that it should be able to access. So for instance, um, let's just take a look at this, right? If I bring up my anonymous Apex console over here and I said access modifiers, access equals new access modifiers. And I tried to say access dot, you know, cool integer, you'll see that it's not available to me, right? It's gonna be red, it's gonna complain, and I'm gonna zoom in for you so you can see it. It it can't be accessed, which honestly is a good thing. But if I change this to public, you can see that that red goes away, and now it's accessible, and people can set that variable from anywhere. So uh, as long as you know they instantiate a new version of your class and start using it, right? So if you create a variable and you do not want that variable to
to be accessed by anywhere else in your wide world of code that you might create in your org, then make sure to declare it private so that it is only usable by the class in which you've declared it. Otherwise, you might have a whole bunch of unintended consequences down the road because developers set it um, you know, in future code and it starts being used in ways that you didn't anticipate and it probably shouldn't be used in. <clears throat> the same thing goes for methods, right? So we could have a public method that says, you know, public void set integer or something. And we could call this and set the integer to whatever we passed in, right? Integer uh, int to set and then set this to int to set like so. Of course, got to remember, I've got to spell integer all the way, unlike virtually every other language. And <clears throat> then you have a method that is accessible, like we have seen in past lessons, right? Let's say access dot set integer. But what if there was a method in here that should only be, you know, local to this class. So say for instance, we had set integer um, publicly available, but there was actually some kind of algorithm or mathematic equation or whatever that was used to set that integer. And we had another method that we called internally to do it that we never wanted anyone else to call or mess with aside from this class and specifically maybe just this method. Who knows? We could say private void <clears throat> um, determine integer calculations, and we could pass it that integer. Again, I cannot spell integer today. <laughs> Int to calc or something, integer to calculate. And then we could say, you know, here, determine integer calculations. Like so. And I'm actually going to update this a little bit, have it return an integer. And what we will do here is say, you know, int to calc plus 45. You know, this is a not exactly the the most incredible example, but just imagine that you had something like an opportunity calculator, right? Which is kind of a common thing in Salesforce. If you do anything in sales cloud, you have opportunities and you want to, you know, update an opportunity or recalculate opportunities or whatever, right? I don't know. Then you might want to pass, you might want to have a public method like this to pass your data into. And then you might have a series of private methods that it calls that does all of the calculation work. And that those private methods, again, are just methods that you would only want this class to have access to, right? That's really the key thing. And you'll find more and more as you start doing your work that most of your methods in a class actually should be private because there's no reason for the outside world of code to call them. Only your class is really ever going to need it. So we might as well make it private so that we don't have unintended consequences from people calling the wrong methods to do the wrong things, right? Um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah. So this is uh, super important uh, to leverage the private keyword. And it really comes into play when you start talking about encapsulation, uh, which is a, an object-oriented concept that we'll get into much later in this course. Um, but just know, the private keyword is very important because you want to, as a developer, only make pieces of your class that should be changed by the outside world public. And anything within your class that should not be changed by the outside world 
should be private because you want to only give the outside world of code what it should have access to. That makes your class a lot easier to understand, a lot easier to use, etc., etc., etc. And again, we'll go over this much more as we go throughout the course. But there you go, the private keyword, super important. It makes sure that things stay local to your class that you are building or working on or whatever. And that the outside world of code, when you call your class, can't just call whatever it wants to, right? Only the things that you want it to call. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. Um, I hope it was helpful, and I hope I see you in the next one. See you later.